Good morning, guys. Mr. Kane here. Morning, guys. Mrs. G. Mrs. G, why isn't your hair grift stupid? <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah, we'll cut that Nor part. Nor will it ever cut be. Cut that part. Yeah. All right. Specific heat capacity today, guys. Uh, so we're going to talk about capacitance for heat, right? Okay. okay. Thermodynamics, as we know, is the study of energy. Right. That way, uh, that's coming from the word thermo, right? Energy. Yep. Um, thermodynamic quantities consists of a number. Uh, and a sign that reflects the direction of the flow of the energy. We've right. talked about this already, right? Correct. Uh, and uh, so just as a review, if the sign is negative, that means that the system is losing energy to the surroundings. And if the sign is positive, that means that the system is gaining energy from the surroundings. So that would be... Exothermic, exothermic and endothermic. endothermic. I had to read them again, yeah. <laughs> All right, so in order to discuss System this... System versus surroundings. We have to discuss these two definitions as far as we're concerned. Uh, as far as we're concerned in chemistry, a system is going to be the, sub the, the substances involved in the reaction, uh, whereas the surroundings is going to be everything else that's around that reaction. So if a reaction is sitting in a beaker, and a beaker gets cold, the beaker is the surroundings, and it lost energy to the system, the reaction going on in the beaker. Right, that would be the chemicals in the beaker. Yep, chemicals mm -hmm. in the beaker are the system, and it's always looked at from the point of view of the system. Right. So if your ice cube is melting, that's the system. It's absorbing energy, and it's absorbing energy from the surroundings. So the air just around the ice cube gets cold. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay. Endothermic reaction. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, we measure uh, energy using the joule, or sometimes the kilojoule. Something we haven't talked about is that energy is sometimes measured in different units. Uh, there is the calorie, the lowercase c calorie Low, in chemistry. Yeah, small c calorie. And this is a conversion factor, so there's uh, no sig figs really considered in either of these numbers, right. correct? Okay. So one calorie is, by definition... 4.184 joules. All right. And then there is another definition here. So again, no sig figs considered in these. Uh, 1,000 calories, small c calories, is equal to one big c calorie. And that's the food kind of calorie. Yes, that's the one on every container. It's the one you look for on your cereal box. Yes. All right. Uh, again, these are used so that we can do conversions. So you should be thinking about conversion factors here with this. Yep, ratios. Um, uh, oh. So for example, look what we got. Can we do this? Can we take 60.1 small c calories and convert it to joules? Well, this shouldn't be too hard. There is a conversion known for calories to joules. So I'm going to put calories on the bottom, joules on the top. And it turns out that that conversion is one calorie for every 4.184 joules. Where am I getting that from? Right here, right? And Mrs. Gossage, I hear you typing buttons. It's 60.1 times 4.184. I need three sig figs. Three sig figs, 251. 251, joules. 251 joules. Another example wants us to convert 28.4 joules to calories. So 28.4 joules, big K, big J joules, and it's small c calories. That's what I should have been emphasizing there. Uh, so it's 28.4 divided by 4.184. 6.79. 6.79 with three sig figs, and this is small, small c, c calories. calories. So just a flittering back and forth between the different units. Mm -hmm. So Mrs. G, you had a question about a candy bar? So if it says that the candy bar is 60.1 small c calories. Big c calories, right? Candy bar? Oh, okay, big c calories. That's what you wanted. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. So how many small c calories is that? Well, uh, let's see, 60.1 big C calories. Big C calories is related to small C calories. Correct. Um, if I remember right, the small C calories are the small ones, so there's a thousand of them right. in one ginormous big C calorie. So this is... 60,100. Yeah, 60,100. So a big C calorie is kind of like a kilo calorie yeah. in a way, yeah. right, because it's a factor of a thousand. All right, I was just curious. It's a shame candy bars aren't 60.1. Yeah, and I guess this explains why they don't write things in small c calories on candy, right? Yeah. On food, because who the heck wants to eat 60,000 calories? Yeah. All right, specific heat. All right, specific heat capacity. Okay, this is the bulk of what we're trying to get done today. Amount of energy required to change the temperature of one gram of any substance, a particular substance, 
by one degree Celsius. So every substance has its own specific heat every, capacity? That's why it's called specific heat ah, capacity. Ah, okay, it's a specific thing. So gold has its own specific heat. Correct. So does iron and lead and aluminum and water. Oh, oh so every element and, and every sand, compound? Yep, everything. So any substance possible is going to have its own specific heat capacity. Correct. All right, that's kind of interesting. Um, the units wind up being kind of complex because it's an amount of energy, so joules, per gram for every degree Celsius they change, so it's joules per... Well, that's what the definition says, too. Right. The amount of energy for one gram, one degree Celsius. All right. Um, and in general, the larger the specific heat capacity, the more energy it takes to get the temperature to change. So the larger the specific heat, the more resistant to change. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the smaller the specific heat, the less energy it takes so to change So I'm going the to assume that water has a very large specific heat because when my pool sits out in that hot, hot sun, it gets warm, but not that warm. I mean, I can still jump in it without boiling off my right. skin. Water has a specific heat capacity of 4.184 joules per gram degree Celsius. What that means is that every gram of water, in order to change it by one degree Celsius, we have to give it 4.184 joules, which is, a, yeah. which is a lot of joules compared yeah. to some other things. Yeah. Um, matter of fact, I think on the next slide we've got a list of some specific heat capacities. Okay. So we can talk about how, that, how water compares to other things. All right. Okay, so here are some specific heat capacities. And like you said, liquid water. Has a pretty high one. Has so a pretty high one. When you compare it to things like aluminum, iron, mercury, carbon, silver. So my iron chairs that sit out in the hot, hot sun. Yeah, your, ni your nice deck chairs. Yes, the nice deck chairs. That's why they're so hot to sit on. Yeah, because they only take 0. 0.45 Which joules per lot. gram per degree Celsius. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's, so that's not a lot of energy. And not they, very so, so they're going to raise temperature really, really quick. Yeah. Now, a lot, of, a lot of chefs use aluminum cookware. Why is that? Well, it's got a pretty high specific heat. Yeah, based on the other metals in the list here, aluminum's got a very high specific heat capacity, which means that it's going to change its temperature pretty gosh darn quickly. Yeah. Now, this is mass dependent, isn't that what that last line uh, says? Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, th this is mass dependent because grams per degree Celsius. So every gram of the substance is going to change by one degree Celsius for each of these energy amounts. So if you compare a dog water bowl out in the sun compared to a pool, the dog water bowl gets a lot warmer faster because it's less mass. Right, because of the, the smaller right. mass. Yeah. Okay. Some other examples of this, um, using specific heat capacity to our, uh, to our advantage sometimes. Uh, I know some people, when they try and put out birthday candles, like I did uh, only a couple months ago, uh, uh, the ones that didn't go out, I kind of licked my fingers and then... Because you have water on your fingers, so right. it absorbs the energy. It actually absorbed the energy of the small little candle. Now, I wouldn't want to put out a bonfire that way, but... Yeah. Yeah. It's a nice little trick. Um, the climate around coastal areas tends to be warmer in the winter because all summer long, the, uh, the body of water, like Lake Michigan, for example, absorbs energy, energy. from the sun. And it gives off energy slowly. Uh -huh. So um, it tends to keep the surrounding land warmer. Warmer, because it's releasing. It's mm -hmm. warm to cool. So when the land cools down, the water releases its energy to it. We're actually pretty lucky where we live right here next to, uh, next to Lake Michigan, because if we were 30 miles farther south, we'd have a lot harsher winters. Well, is that why they always say cooler by the lake or warmer by the lake? Because mm -hmm. of the water? Right, exactly. The, the water helps out. You were talking about uh, I like that going one. to the, the beach. Sand, that explains why the sand yeah. is always so doggone hot when you're at the beach. You know what? We'll let them think about this, and we'll talk about it in class. How about that? All right. All right. So think about that. Ooh, a mathematical computation. One, yeah. two, three, four variables. Four variables. Q, M, S, and delta T. Uh, we should probably identify what each thing is. Q is going to be the amount of energy in joules. Yep. Right. Mass, grams, mm. very specific mass, right? units. Mm -hmm. S is going to be specific heat capacity, which we've just been learning about. Right. So S is kind of a constant depending on the substance, right? Right. You okay. should be able to calculate it if you want, if you know Q, M, and delta T. Right. But uh, you should also be able to look it up so you can tell how much right. energy it's going to take to change something's temperature. And delta T is exactly what we think it be, would be. We know delta means change in, so okay. it's the change in temperature. All right. Which is always found by taking the final temperature and subtracting the initial temperature is from it. Is it possible to get a negative Q, Mr. King? 
Uh, it's possible to get a negative Q. What that would mean is that the item is giving up energy. Yeah, losing. Okay. So it would, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. it would be uh, gaining. T it would be losing yeah. temperature. Yeah, T final would be a smaller number. Right. All right. Mm -hmm. That there's an example coming. Okay. Calculate the amount of energy it takes to heat 12.5 grams of iron, a uh, specific heat of 0 0.50 joules per gram degree Celsius, from 25 degrees to 46.0 degrees Celsius. Well, this is just going to be writing out the reaction. Uh, this is going to be just writing the equation and putting everything in its right spot, right? It's Q equals MS delta T, right? We're doing the algebra. And okay. what, are, what are we looking for here? We're looking for Q. Calculate We're looking for the Q. amount of energy. Right. Q is energy. So Q, what's the mass? Mass says 12.5 grams. OK, so 12.5. Specific heat's given in the problem. 0 0.450. And then delta T is a matter of temperature 2 minus temperature 1. So 46.0 minus 25.0. And I'm going to do that first. You've got to please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. OK. So do you want to do all that math? 21.0 for the change in temperature. All right, so 21.0 for the change in temperature. All multiply right. that by 0.45, and then multiply that by 12.5. And I get 118. 118 joules for this particular piece of iron. Hey, I did it which, right. Which, hey, check this out. That's the same as the answer we had started awesome. with, right? That's easy. Okay. Now, Mrs. G, if this was 25 grams of iron, how much energy would it take to do the same thing? A little bit more. A little bit more, right? Because <laughs> yeah. it's more. Uh, well, 25 is twice 12 and a half, yeah. right? Yeah. So it should be double 118. Yep, 236. All right. So twice as much iron takes yep. twice as much energy. That, that makes sense, makes right? Makes sense, yeah. Okay. It's mass dependent. Uh, so looking at the second problem here, it's basically the same problem except for one thing. It's water. It's water instead of iron, right? And so water has a larger specific heat. Different specific heat capacity. So Q equals 12.5 grams times 4.184 for the specific heat capacity times the 21 degrees that you just calculated for us a moment ago. Correct. And we wind up getting a Q of 1,010 joules Ooh. with three, that's three sig figs worth. Um, that's a lot more than iron, huh? Yes. So if you're trying to boil water 21 degrees Celsius, you've got to really put a good flame under that thing, don't you? Yes, you do. It's got a lot. It's going to take a lot of energy to get that water going, um, uh, whereas it's not going to take a lot of energy to get that iron. Yeah. That is a lot of energy. OK. All right, so Q equals MS delta T, right? Now, this is a different variable. This is calculate the phi. Oh. We're actually looking for T, T final. final. We're not looking for t delta T, are we? Yeah, you can tackle this two ways. Which way would you like to do in the actual, just find delta T and then do the subtraction? I think I'd like to find out delta T and uh, then find the that subtraction. Sounds that easiest. seems the easy thing to do. So Q is an amount of energy. So that's 12.5 joules, right? And it's in the right units, so that's good. OK. Mass is 1.30 grams. Yep. S, well, this is iron, so we just learned in the last example that it's 0.45. And we can find delta T here. Now, the find that uh, 37.0 degrees Celsius isn't used just yet, right? We're no. doing this in two steps. No. All right. So um, 1.3 times 0.45. I'm just going to solve for delta T. I'm going to put 12.5 divided by left parentheses 1.3 times 0.45, close parentheses, and you get 21.4 degrees Celsius. Mm -hmm. Yeah, everything else degrees cancel, Celsius. right? Yeah, everything else cancels. I'm very visual. Sorry. All right, 21.4 degrees Celsius is the change in temperature. So what we need to do, delta T, by definition, is T final minus T initial, right? right. So, so I needed to, this is my delta T, so, so it's 21.4 21 is equal to temperature final, which I'm looking for. And 37.0 is my initial temperature. So I want to take 21.4 and add 37. 58.4. And t temperature final winds up being 58.4 degrees Celsius. So okay, that so is. Just out of curiosity, I'm going to just check our work, yeah? Mm -hmm. See if it makes logical sense. That's a good idea. The question says it takes energy to heat. Right, so I'm adding energy to the iron. Right, so when it's starting at a temperature of 37. If you're adding energy to it, it should go up. Right, I'm expecting the temperature to go up. And it did, and so we're good. Did. 
So sounds good. As long as I plugged it into my calculator right, we're good. That's a two-stepper. So is it a two-stepper anytime you find any of the temperatures? It seems like it, yeah. 